Our first group came up with the idea for a kinetic energy charger. Our group consists of Connor Kaplowski. He's a senior at Wheaton North. Not only has he been working on this project, but he's kept himself busy in high school. He's been involved with track in high school. And uh, as a Boy Scout, and those of you who know that, what I'm talking about, had, uh, recently earned his Eagle Scout recognition. So he's a very accomplished young man. He intends to attend Iowa State University uh, following graduation this year and uh, pursue a career in engineering. His partner in this project, Nicholas Champagne, he's a senior at West Chicago High School. He uh, also was involved in track in high school, currently working at McDonald's. He is joy, like most of us, enjoys his time with his friends. He plans to attend COB at the, uh, in the fall, and he plans to transfer to Iowa State University and get involved in electrical engineering. This guy's really excited about the project. I am as well, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nick and Connor. Hi, I'm Connor. And I'm Nick Champagne. And our project today is the Kinetic Energy Power Sports Ball. Lightweight. The bike was not lightweight because it's an entire bike. 
And then our last, our last uh, idea, or our last criteria was the battery storage. Uh, the bike does not have a battery storage. You can only charge your phone while you're riding. So it doesn't actually store any energy. It just charges as you're going. It's just your view of our design criteria. And that's the four things that Nick just mentioned. And next we had a solution, and that was to create a kinetic generator that would be inside a sports ball. And as the ball is used, it can generate electricity that will charge the battery inside the ball. And then after you're done playing, you can plug in a USB cable in and charge any mobile device from the phone to a watch. You and here's a picture of a prototype. So uh, the the way the kinetic gener generators work, or at least this one, is these coils of wire, uh, as the magnet right here passes through and then passes back, the elect or the magnetic field from here creates a current through these wires. And the current goes to the battery, which is right about here. And then the uh, energy is stored in the battery right here. And then this board that's just kind of sticking out right there is actually a voltage amplifier because the battery that we have is basically a double A. And double A's don't have enough voltage to charge a, a phone. So we had to have a voltage uh, amplifier so that way uh, the phone can actually receive the charge. So our next problem was trying to figure out what kind of ball we should use for our prototype. So we added another question into our survey, asking people what their favorite sport was. And we found a variety of results, but football stood out the most. And out of 45 people, 16 said football was their favorite sport. So we decided to put our generator in a football. So our uh, finished product uh, is actually just inside the football, and the football is just designed as a, uh, you, uh, when you're throwing it, it generates electricity from the motion of the magnet moving backward, and then when you catch it, it'll stop, so the magnet will keep going and generate even more energy, and then when you're running with it, you're generating energy while you're running. Uh, and then he's actually going to show the board the uh, product in order. You can see, well, right now it's low on battery, but it does charge phones. It will say it's charging, and then it will shut off because the battery is low on the football. Yeah. And that's one of the problems we're trying to fix in our final design. that already existed and reversed engineering, engineered them, which is taking them apart and trying to find uh, the two components we needed to create a common uh, solution. And the photos aren't there right now, but we had a forever torch, which is a kinetically powered flashlight, and a solar panel, which is what we used for our voltage amplifier and USB. And then the cost we had, it was a little pricey for a prototype, but we had the Forever Torch was listed at $25, $24, and the football we used is a goof football, which is made of foam, and that was only $10. Yet the USB port and voltage amplifier from the solar panel costs about twenty dollars, and it added up to a total of fifty-four twenty-four. So some of the next steps that we could go into is uh, to create a chamber inside the ball to uh, allow that this piece can come in and out, so that way we can interchange the ball, and that way you can only you can buy the kinetic generator by itself, and then buy the ball, uh, the different types of balls by themselves as well, so it'll save you on cost, because you don't have to buy like the separate type of ball. 
And then we can also increase the component dur durability for the kinetic generator. Because currently, this plastic is kind of brittle, and so if we were to actually throw this around, it would probably crack or break. And then there's some exposed parts too as well, so we need to also put that into a more protective case. And then we can also increase the battery storage because right now it doesn't get quite enough or quite as much charge as we want it to. Um, and then we can also increase the voltage output so we don't need to uh, have a separate um, component from uh, the USB or um, from the uh, solar panel. Um, there is supposed to be a picture of a soccer ball here showing our next step. There are some technical issues right now, and some of the pictures won't show up, so I just want to apologize for that. And then we want to thank some of our some of our teachers and mentors that helped us along. Some of those people were Mr. Kinchek, who is our engineering design and development teacher, standing right back there. Mr. Lindbergh, who helped us with our digital electronics components in our football and helped us get to this point. And we want to thank Ms. Johnson, who was here for us the first year and led us through our intro to engineering and pathways to engineering classes. And then we'd also like to thank our uh, parents and family for, or family and friends to, uh, because they supported us on our uh, invention path. And then, uh, did anybody have any questions? Um, how long do you have to play to get a decent charge? Uh, well, with a larger battery, it'll pr probably re require a longer time of play. But this current battery can charge in 10 minutes. So 10 minutes of play and the battery is fully charged. And then you can get like maybe an emergency phone call. Uh, so like you can just play some football or throw the ball around when uh, if you're like stranded or something and your phone is dead. So. But a larger battery would of course require a longer time. Curious, how did you pick the uh, kinetic charger as uh, the prime means of generating uh, voltage? Well, we were kind of uh, influenced by last year's project, which was a kinetic generator in the shoe, and we wanted to take a unique approach on that. Um, Had you considered doing a second prototype too, like say something bigger, like a soccer ball? Uh, yeah, as soon as, if we, first we have to shrink this, the uh, inside part, yeah. and then of course add the protective case around the uh, circuit board sticking out right there. Mm -hmm. And then we plan on having uh, different types of balls to have chambers, so that way we can just slide the kinetic generator in and out, so that way we don't have to uh, create a specific ball that has that specific generator in it. Mm -hmm. We can just take it out. Um, another question, did you have any setbacks when you were doing this? And I'm not saying that to embarrass you, but a lot of times when you have a setback, it forces you to rethink and you learn from your mistakes. Well, our setback was that with the components we were taking from the solar panel uh, and attaching them to, they were a little complicated to fi figure out at first, and there was a separate button that was on the component we took, and we had to find a way to fix that, because initially you would have to hold down the button to get any charge out of the battery. plug it into a phone, it take or it would charge for about five, ten minutes, and then the battery would run out. Um, but for a ten minute charge time and you get ten minutes of charge, I think that's a reasonable amount for the size of battery that we have. But of course we always want to increase the battery size because currently it's not as big as we want. I have a basic question. When, when you talk about the scientific method, how, how does that relate to what, what you guys did? You guys did a really great job on this, by the way. I just want to say. But uh, what did you learn from that? What, 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 how would you sum up what you think the scientific method is for this project? 
Um, well, our first hypothesis is that the battery would actually provide enough charge to uh, private voltage to charge the phone. And obviously that was wrong. That's why we had to get the solar panel. And then our initial tests were uh, some components that we had were actually just kind of laying around. They weren't actually adding anything. So we had to uh, cut those down. Um, and that shrunk our little circuit board on the end here. And then um, uh, later tests, we found how to fix the button as well. And then uh, some circuit changes that we made. 